many times when uh, people come into the practice of Zen, uh, or Buddhism for that matter, um, at least in my experience, when I first came into the practice, I really had no idea what Zen was. So I thought Zen was a um, style of Japanese furniture. <laughs> no idea what it was. Uh, uh, in Buddhism, to me, it was, well, it's the fat guy with the big belly, and, and you rub your hand on it, and it give you good luck. That's what I had seen in Chinese restaurants. And really no idea what, what the practice was. So I started practicing, and I really never asked myself myself what I was doing. I was just like, they told me what to do. They say, sit, meditate, and do this, and that's what I was doing. And then one day the question came. I, I asked myself, well, what is it that I'm doing? What is, what is Zen? What's the practice? And for the longest time, I just my mind would just get tangled up. And, and then one day, just like, I understood. I, um, I want to believe I understood, and as opposed to having concepts, uh, my practice was basically meditating. I didn't read any book for maybe in the first seven, eight years of my practice. I read two books, maybe, and all I did was sit, sit and meditate, and and I guess when when a mind matures. And it came the time when the question came, I just realized that all I was doing these eight, nine years, sitting, meditating, anything from 30 minutes an hour to four hours a day for a period of seven, eight, nine years, I don't even remember. Uh, and I realized that all, all I had been doing was basically questioning myself, questioning my beliefs, questioning everything that I had believed up to that point. And I realized that, that how my reality was arising out of my own opinion, how I, how, what I thought about myself and about life and about everything that I I was raised to believe. I was born and raised in Mexico, so therefore my, my racing was way different than what we have here. So a lot of beliefs were there. And it came to the point in which I had to face them. And, and, and I realized that the practice was just that, was inquiring. And, and even in, in, a, in the Advaita Vedanta practice and the Hinduism, it's, it's also kind of the same thing, you know, what is this? What is this? What is this? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And, and in, in that questioning, that inquiring, I started just realizing that every time I question myself, a new, a new question would come up. And then it was like a, like an onion. You start peeling yourself all these layers of beliefs and, and everything that, that that you believe. And then it comes to the point, and I came to the point, and in, in which well, I, I I thought I knew something. Oh no! Wow! I know something. And then again, that I questioned that belief. Do I really know something? And I realized that there was that I really didn't know anything. And when I was really at that point in, 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 in questioning everything, it came to the point when I was, I need to really question everything in my life. And, and for that matter, what I mean is, you have to question what you believe about, uh, uh, about family, about your, your uh, uh, culture, your political beliefs, your, your everything within your, your perception, it has to be questioned. Otherwise, I, I, this is the way I saw it. It's otherwise, I'm just like a mud cake, and I put a really nice icing and fruits on top, and, and it'll be, it'll be a really good-looking cake, but it's still a mud cake. 
because if the beliefs are not questions to, to the core, in which I, it, it, and at the end it doesn't even matter, you still keep those beliefs, but the point is that we question them. They will question them, and, and, and we get to, to, to really see things. I, I, I got to see a lot of, uh, uh, for the fact that I was raised in Mexico, that but we, we see reality is totally different, you know. Uh, and I started seeing how everything that I was told, thought, and saw in my family became a way of thinking, acting, behaving. And, and I started realizing, and all of a sudden, I started seeing all these little things that apparently made no, made no difference, but they made the whole difference in the world. Uh, so, like I say, when we come to practice uh, many times, and, and, and I guess I could say, in my case, in a way too, uh, and we come to the practice thinking that that me me is gonna get fixed that I'm gonna get fixed and then I will be a better me but I'm still me so this beautiful me needs more needs to be more beautiful so we we go into the practice with this idea that we're gonna be a better person that at one point we're gonna shine because we're gonna be so you know so feeling so good, but unfortunately for the practice to really have some effect, we need to go through our painful moments, our painful uh, uh, memories. All those things are hurt us forever since we were born. We all have uh, these beliefs. I mean, in my case, for some reason, I don't even remember. Well, actually, I do now. Uh, just came to me. Uh, I, I always felt like this loneliness, abandonment, and I'm realizing that is it the fact that my mother was, uh, uh, oh, since I was born, my father wasn't around, so my mother had to raise three kids by herself, and she had to go to work. She was a maid, so she had to go to work, and I remember, since being very little, feeling abandoned. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, seeing it right now that it was that feeling that I must have been, I don't even remember myself, but I do have the memory of being alone. So that feeling stayed with me all my life. And seeing it right now, it's understanding where that feeling came from. So that's the practice. That's the practice. And, and many times the practice, you might, if you, well, the, the uh, gate, the way to it, to that awareness, to this questioning is through meditation. Because meditation, what it does, it, it stops your mind from running itself, from giving yourself the answers that you want to hear the, the uh, reasons to keep acting the way we do. Oh, well, I'm doing this because of this. And maybe you shouldn't be doing this, you know. I mean, it's like the people that they know that they shouldn't smoke, people that shouldn't eat sugars, the diabetic people with problems with the lungs and they keep smoking. They say, well, you know, I got the right to, yes, we'll have the right to, but we know we shouldn't. And that's how we keep finding reasons to do what we do and keep acting the way we do, behaving the way we do. So, that questioning um, has to be really... Like Roshi has said, we, we, one has to be uh, brutally honest. You know, we have to be brutally honest with ourselves. And then uh, we meditate, uh, we ponder, and we're really honest with ourselves. Meditation brings that, that gate into seeing ourselves. And then we ponder, and, and, and I'm not saying, when you're meditating, you're just meditating. 
the pondering comes after because the meditating gives you that space for your mind to really be out of your, your own thinking. And then when you get to that space where you're really pondering and seeing, then you have to be honest because if we're not honest, we're just going to keep doing the same thing, you know, chasing, chasing our tails. So the practice is just that. The practice is being being honest and, and being at that moment in when, when um, the meditation gives the space to really look at ourselves and question. And many times it's going to be painful. Unfortunately, there's no, no way around it. And it's going to be in a nice way because if, if that, that which hurt us, we've been hiding it. That's precisely the reason why we've been hiding it. Because it hurts and we want to face it. And we, like I said, we just keep adding layers to make it look nice. But if we really don't, don't accept it, you know, that, that you know, uh, for, for the longest time, I, I, when I was uh, young, I had a really bad temper. Really bad temper, violent temper. And not until I, I looked into it, and I was young, and now I realized that, you know, for some reason I was able to distinguish. So not only until I, I questioned that anger, I really let go of it and, and started going on a different path from going on a, well, a path of destruction as, as a teenager, going into a path in which I, 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 I just realized that, that following that anger wasn't going to lead me anywhere. And I must have been like 16. So, is that, is that, that questioning, that, that constant inquiry, inquiring, you know, the inquiry, they're like, what is it that I'm, what am, what am I seeing, what am I feeling? And, and when we encounter a situation, a daily situation that keeps being uncomfortable, just being honest, what is it that I feel like? You know what I really feel like? You know, grabbing a baseball bat and, you know, <laughs> and just being, not that you're going to act upon, upon the anger, but facing the anger. Because many times we believe that this practice will give us this state of mind which nothing's going to affect us. But that's the total opposite. If anything, this practice gives us the access to feel connected with our feelings. And, and like I said, at least facing them and analyzing the feelings, seeing, okay, what is it that I'm feeling? I'm feel, feeling anger, you know, I'm feeling, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I don't know, impatient. Intolerance, am I being intolerant? <coughs> and just facing it, like I said, not, not that we're going to act upon it, and we can get upset, but there's the concept of clean anger. And what, by clean anger, what I mean is that you get upset, and then you let that anger come out, but the next second is gone. Because the problem is not that we feel what we feel. Anger, uh, pain, whatever it is that we feel. The problem is not that we feel, the problem is that we cling to that feeling. We get angry and the next day we're still angry and three days angry and then six months and a year and 25 years and then we don't talk to a family member for 30 years and then after 30 years you're like, what is it that I don't talk to you? What was the reason? You don't even remember. But we fall into the onto these feelings, so this anger, and that's the problem. The problem is not feeling, not it's not the feelings, it's not the, the, the sensations that we go through physically. It's the fact that we find the reason to excuse, and we we tend to think that that's something bad. Oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be angry. Well, if you're angry, you're angry, uh, and and it's the best uh, gift you can get feeling and being able to face it and, and seeing why it is that, 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 that you know that, that I'm angry and, and to me uh, a few years ago I found out the reason why I was so angry as, 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 a, as a teenager and it was the fact that my father was not the perfect <laughs> father figure and I had, I had, 
lot of resentment against them. And really, really, really uh, bad, bad resentment. And, uh, and I was holding on to that and finding a reason to hold on to it. And then when I, when, when it, when I looked at it and realized, and, and, and I was like, well, you know, he had these good moments. And, you know, at the end, before the end of his life, we met again after so many years. I went back to Mexico, visited him. And it's funny because <coughs> the first thing he said after we met after so many years, before even I said hi, Dad, he came and said, I want to apologize for everything I did to you and, and your mom and your brother and sisters. And here I was for all those years having this uh, resentment against them. And, but it had affected him too, because he knew. So once I understood that, you know, and then let go of that anger, and then I realized, and, and I realized that I love my father, regardless of. And I was grateful because the fact that, that he was my father and the way he was gave me the access to learn something. So that's been one of the biggest lessons in my life. Anger, dealing with my anger, dealing with my father, which by the way, he was, <laughs> he was a, a cop, not, not the kind of a cop, you know, the ones that come at night. And, <laughs> And you know, in the middle of the night, and take you to an unknown location. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, so the practice has given me access to that. Has given me given me access to see myself and see what is it that I that I'm feeling, and 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 just in not letting go, at least being aware that I'm not letting go. Because if, uh, again, the fact is not that we got those feelings. The fact is we cling to them. And many times, if we cannot find at that moment the reason why it is that we're feeling that, we can at least agree with ourselves that we're not letting go of it. And just, just being okay with it. Many times what we want is we want an immediate answer. We want it and we want it now. And many times we're not in that position. So that comes with the practice, the fact that you, you can accept it. At this moment, I cannot you know, uh, uh, do something. In the past weeks, uh, uh, I, I've been dealing with some uh, health situations, and, and one thing is that my mind gets uh, kind of clouded, and it's hard for me to remember concepts. So, in any other situation, I would be worried about it, but to me, it's like, why? I'm so blessed to not being able to remember anything else other than this very moment. <laughs> and everything I say comes out of the experience of this moment. So I don't have to rely on, 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 on memories or learn things, but except just being in the moment. And that has given, I guess the practice has given me this, has given me the fact that you, know, you cannot be anywhere else except this at this moment and dealing with it. So is that access that the practice gives us, the, the access to, to being able to experience this moment and, and being with it regardless of what it comes, you know, the way it comes. Because it could be, you know, we, we, we could be in, in, in pain, we could be uh, sick, we could, you know, be having car problems, economic problems. But the, the practice of, of the inquiry, the, the, keep, the fact that I keep asking myself, what is this? Why am I doing this? And by, by that, I, I don't mean that I'm constantly immersed in that question. I'm just there, and I observe it. And I put it in the back of my mind, and I keep just talking. And then the answer comes. I don't know where that comes from, but you can see. Because you already posed the question. Why am I feeling this? And then all of a sudden, as you're talking, as you're interacting, boom, you see, you realize things that, that were not dead before. You couldn't see them. So that's, that's to me, that's one of the greatest uh, benefits of this practice. And, and 
that leads me to, okay, well, then we have 2,700 years of, of Buddhism and Zen. But it resumes to, what is it? Is this practice? We can learn all the sutras that we want, but if we don't really practice, we don't sit and face ourselves. That's why when we meditate, we face the wall. So there's no distraction, so we can really... I see the wall as a mirror. Because there's, then there's no one else but you. There's no excuse for you to not face yourself. You don't have anybody else to... Unless you step out of your, where you are meditating and you go and, and, and like I always said, if you're not here, you're either in the past, in the future, or somewhere else. There's no other way you can be. You know, and, and by that being somewhere else, it's like you could be wanting to be in Cancun. Hawaii, you know, and that happens at every moment. And if you are at work or doing something that you don't particularly like, we tend to just, you know, escape because we don't like what we're doing instead of just facing. Uh, um, a brother, he was this morning, was saying, you know, he shared an experience that uh, uh, Tom Dutt, that, that instead of looking at things that he doesn't like to do, instead of thinking about, not doing them, he just got up and did them. And, and that, that, that's because many times before we even do something, we already have an idea about how it's going to be, and that stops us from, from doing. But just like I say, you know, just uh, inquiring and, and, and being in that space in which you're able to question what it is that, that, that you're... And, and like I said, not like a stop everything and say, what am I feeling? What am I doing? Just keep it in the back of your mind and, and observe yourself. That's the access that this practice gives you. And, and to me, that's, that's, like I say, this is, uh, you know, we're here and we have this temple and we've got all the sutras and all the, the 20, 107 years of history and great masters that have come. But to me, that's the, the, the the one thing that could be learned from this practice and, and be grateful that we have this place where we can come and, and, and have that space for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But again, that practice can be with you wherever you are. You can be home, you can be at work and have that awareness.